Hi, everybody. This is Carter and Tez. Hey, how you doing? Back again after a little hiatus. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we didn't go to the beach, though. We went to outer space. Yeah, we just took a little time off to recharge our batteries. We've been on this path for a while, and... And, uh, this is our fifth year of podcasting. This is our fifth year. And Amazing. we are sitting in the 18th century farmhouse in Maine, in which we had our very first podcast five years ago in 2019. Really? This is where it all began. This is where Z Lord began. You're kidding. No, before we started on our six month camping trip before the pandemic. Ah, that's uh-huh. right. Wow, and, that's and for those that's of you who don't know, because um, you know maybe you're just new here to Z Lord. We started this podcast because Carter and I are both artists, and we had planned to go on this six-month camping trip. We didn't know a pandemic was coming. And so I said to myself, oh, this would be a really good project for two artists on the road. You know, we're we're away from our usual routines and our studios and our equipment. I said, let's start a podcast. So it began as... A collaboration, and here we are. And it was basically a talk. Of, yeah, it was about impressions that we were getting along the way, as the uh, as the uh, 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 visuals and the nature changed. Yeah, if you if you're interested, just go back to the archives, and start with the very first early episodes God, that back was in a great 2019. Trip, man. We went, we saw a lot of different things. Yeah. That was a great trip. We went up into Canada to start and all the way across and then up and down across the west for for four four months. And wilderness camping. camping. All wilderness. wilderness. Yeah, yeah, we were pretty much off the hard road. And we continued that uh, uh, last year, staying off the hard road, going down into South America and Bolivia, Chile, and Uruguay, and, and then up in the Tierra del Fuego. So anyway, we're back, and we're continuing our pursuit of truth, as we can grasp it, and happiness, how does one get the most out of life? And part of that would be stopping sometimes to regroup and to just take a little time off and try to get clear about what really counts and and uh, refocus our attention on what's important. Yeah. Don't you think? I think that's really important, Yeah. Really important, and a lot of people don't do that. Don't take the time to just have a little time off from their regular routine. I mean, that could be something as simple as just shutting off a screen and putting it down and going outside and looking at the clouds, you know, something that simple. It's really hard for people to walk away from their electronic devices these days. But in our case, we... uh, um, our, our little hiatus was precipitated by your knee replacement, um, which happened early in June, I think, wasn't it? Something like that. Or I can't exactly remember the date, but that's a, that's a big commitment. And recovery from a big change in your life is, is another commitment. So life brings us these challenges, and we get to say, oh, I'm going to give my all to this new challenge and give up something that we were used to doing before to take care of the new challenge, which in our case was recovery and, you know, doing daily physical things and swimming and exercising rather than keeping abreast with the podcast. So that was a, a, a good reason to, to stop. Sometimes you just reflect. need some time off, but, but, uh, and that, uh, well, what did that you, brings us to. to, did, to wait, I want to ask a question. Did you, did you come up with any insights about your direction in life, Carter? I know I did. Yeah. I'm asking you because I, I'm hoping you're going to ask me too. But so, what, what did you come up with in the new direction well, in your life? You first. I asked you first. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think I'm transitioning from. Uh, from a, a period, a, a work period, to trying to get real clear about the next ten years, the ten year plan on what what uh, what really what what I'm, what what we're going to do now to make the most out of the time we have left, which really isn't that much, but making sure that 
every day counts and that we're getting the most out of this great life we've been given. And uh, mm-hmm. and so getting we refocused on the things. I think that we, that's we part of that whole ta- goal thing. Of, we in sat life down and is, talked about the 10-year plan and, yeah, and every early on in our, in our little hiatus. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's helpful. I've come to understand that it's helpful for me to go over what I'm trying to do from time to time and not just put it off for three or four years to do that. Do it every, do it pretty regularly. Revisit what it is we're doing and what, what's important and what we're focusing our, what I'm focusing my time on and trying to make sure I'm getting the most out of it. And part of that is to enjoy the day, well, enjoy I'll, every day. I want to also ask you, you don't have to answer because this is obviously public. Anybody can hear inside your brain. Did you come up with some answers about what you want to dedicate this next 10 years of your life to? Now that we're not you're really in the working force, you and I both. Yeah, I want to make sure that I get, that I put in a good significant part of my day every day in uh, working on motion picture things, motion, mo- motion picture projects. Video, video. I- interesting things. ones that are good. And I have them on my little YouTube. And, uh, and then also, uh, I think staying active and healthy is, is becoming more and more important all the time as oh, I get yeah. older and I'll get see. more creaky. I got to keep moving, man. Mm-hmm. I got to just stay healthy. Because with no health, God, you, just, you see it right. all the time. I know. All us, we're all getting... It's- Cre- uh, it's just as important uh, creaky, as, and we as gotta stay choosing moving. to be happy, Jeepers. to choose to be healthy. Okay, so for I know that you have... And what a, about you? Well, I had, wait a minute, I'm, I want to ask something else. Now, I know you have a big commitment going on with your peers from your college days, and I see you spending a lot of time interacting with them. Do you want to just... Well, talk, that's become a big just, thing. Just tell people briefly what you're, what you're doing. Because our college... Uh, 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 some other members and friends of my college uh, during this period in time where the uh, where the universities have been called to the carpet and have been uh, it has been identified that certain aspects of the university life and especially in the eastern United States and the Ivy Leagues in particular uh, have 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 gone off course in my view and the view of other people who are on the opposite side of the political spectrum than I, which is curious because I've been included in this discussion, uh, even though we have vastly different histories in our political stances in life, that we think that there has been a huge growth in anti-Semitism, which is actually Jew hatred, which is the word that I'm using now and after talking to a you, bunch of my Jewish friends. That comes from friends. your Jewish friends, right? That's not us waspy people. No, well, they're, we're thinking that anti-Semitism is a kind of a cold clinical term. It's, that, that, it's that too is, wimpy. Well, it keeps it keeps us away from facing what's really happening, which is mm-hmm. the horror of discrimination in the Jewish world, and mm-hmm. and that's 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 stump that's uh, boiled over into. Discrimination in the DEI world too, which is uh, that that whole effort was was well meant and well begun, and the idea of having diversity and equality is a good one. But uh, like a lot of things, uh, when you have overzealous kind of self righteous people involved, which is uh, the university people in general and the faculties and the leadership has just gone off course in in uh, the cancel culture. Not, not allowing freedom of speech or people with conservative views, for instance, to talk in in uh, liberal uh, universities, and that that's just not right. It's not healthy, and any kind of discrimination is not healthy. And that so, what has, are you and your classmates doing about it? Well, we've uh, that's the main issue. We've gotten together, two hundred and twenty seven or thirty one or whatever people to in our class in our. In our class, which is hard to get 231 people in any class to agree on anything, Mm -hmm. to come together after a lot of back and forth about what we think is important, number one, or those four or five things, and 
anti-Semitism or, or Jew hatred being one of them, or the, the main one, actually, the biggest one. We're not going to call it anti-Semitism and, anymore. No. That's too soft. And, uh, uh-uh. and uh, also just the university misdirection in general. Uh, which needs to be regrouped. And so we're, we are coming together as alumni to communicate with the presidents and the boards of overseers and the corporations that are in charge mm-hmm. and holding them to account, calling them to the carpet on what's right and true and becoming part of this discussion. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important. It's worth doing. And it, and it, and it also is, will affect not only universities worldwide, but it will affect the entire fabric of society in the world if we can get the universities to not take political positions but to but to be forums for discussion because the only way we're going to get through all of this stuff including the democrat and republican thing is to talk about it's it re-education. and is to talk about yes. it without contempt yes. and, no and let contempt. people express yes. themselves yes. and and have a, mm-hmm. and, and not come with an with, a, not, with an agenda, which is what we have to. Each mm-hmm. one of us has to live with every day. But as soon as we turn on the TV, it doesn't matter which show we're watching. Yeah, we're getting somebody else's point of view because that's good business for them to but, create arguments. But this is what we're doing here. Obviously, as people who have a five-year-long podcast, we feel we have the right to express our opinion without having to say, oh, gee, sorry, folks, you know, but this is my opinion. You know, obviously, when you pick up the microphone and start broadcasting to the world, you feel like a participant in the world, and we don't have to turn it into an argument. We don't have to turn it into being defensive. We just feel it is a comfortable part of our of our contribution as humans, not even the fact that we're artists who like to, you know, create ideas and and you know help people to uplift themselves it's it's our human right everybody has a right to their opinion but nobody should have contempt like carter said we should be able to have discussions we don't have a right to insult others and we don't have a right to be mean and ugly because that all that does is is end the discussion because you, once you start that that's the end of the, there's no more talk until that part gets resolved and and mm-hmm. God, it's been awful in this country in the last 10, 15 years with the, with the newspapers and the political and the one-sidedness. And God, it's yeah, just Yeah, but I think it's served a purpose where it's just like underlying the surface of, of, of our society. There has been contempt and maybe the Jew hatred is part of it and the DEI stuff and a DYI. Um, is that? Am I saying that right? D-E-I. D-E-I. God, I'm, I've got <laughs> dyslexia terribly. I mix my acronyms all over the place. But just like a person has like a pimple, you know, something has to come to a head in order for it to be released when there's a toxic poisoning, whether it's in a person's being or if it's in society. You can't just have it under the surface all the time because it just gets worse and it just permeates everything, right? So, yeah. so I think that this moment in time, especially as we approach the presidential election this year, I mean, in just in a few weeks, it's it's really important time for people to realize that this is a growth time, this is a transformation time, this is a choice time about choosing higher concepts than we've had in the in the past. And part of including everybody in the conversation is part of it without contempt, without hatred. So I just wanted everybody to know what you've been involved with besides recovery and besides reassessing life. You've also been very busy with your peers. And, and so for me... And so what about you, Tess? Oh, well, thank you for asking, Carter. Well, you know, my, my life is much more quiet as, as an artist and a spirit activist and uh, an author. I now have uh, like books available. Anybody who wants to read about the spiritual journey a la Tez, just go to Amazon and you will see it. Uh, five the books. The Power of Oneness series. There's Ooh. now in a series. We're, we're spending right. quite a bit of time trying to get this out where people can see it. Yes, so 
Carter is being helpful with doing business things, and I'm now focusing on bringing all the ideas that I have been nurturing and living through my art, my writing, my my uh, you know studies, my interacting in society, and also my family, and just in small ways and big ways. And your prayers. Yes, my quiet life and my public life, whatever. I'm bringing it all together in an online course. So I'm focusing on that. That's my project right here, right now, at, in this specific time. But to get there took, you know, a lifetime of experiences. I think that's going to be a very great, exciting new I'm thing excited for you. Because you're, 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 you're very knowledgeable about a lot of these things. Well, and you're articulate about them. Let's talk about a minute uh, on the title, The Power of Oneness. For me, oneness is the same as if somebody said, well, can you define a higher power? Can you define what some people call God? Uh, can you define spirit? Can you define something that is intangible and unseen? And I would always go back to whatever word I might use to get there. In English, it would be oneness. In Sanskrit, which is the yogic tradition I come from, it's the word om, also pronounced om. But it's basically that we are all connected through consciousness, through breath, through our existence. And for those of us who cherish that sacred connection and honor it and see it and feel it and live it, um, it, it is a very vital part of realizing that happiness is just being in tune with that oneness. And so my job as an artist and an articulator of ideas is to bring this concept to a practical step-by-step -step methodology so that anyone, like for instance, the worst person in, in anxiety and despair, which we know people like that who just can't see the sense of anything in life or on the verge of suicide, how can a person like that uh, embrace the concept that we are all one consciousness, that we are all in this together, that we are interwoven in the way we interact in society, our little roles that we deem important for ourselves, that we you know, choose with our own free will. And, and even though there is conflict and there is um, negativity and there are challenges, it's up to us to deal with each thing as it arises as part of the interwoven matrix of life, which is wonders. <coughs> oh. We're just, we're just getting over COVID, folks, so if you hear Excuse a little me. cough here and there. <laughs> so that's my, that's my job. That's what I'm working on right now. Yeah, and I think you're really good at it. I think it's good because I think you're a good speaker. And you're and you're and a writer and, and, an, and, an and a good writer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I express myself with visions and with stories. And right now I'm making it more available in practical ways, the power of oneness. Yeah. As you do with your videos, your your videos are are so joyous and so um, I don't know aesthetically they're just very exciting. You know, you choose the right well, kind of space. visuals, that's yeah, nice. and and you coordinate it with music. You're a little primitive, mm, no, but that's like, okay. I think things should be more primitive. I mean, this overabundance of technical stuff, the AI. I mean, when I see it, slick is not my game. Slick is not my game. <laughs> like when I. I I have a lot of opportunities, you know, like different programs I use for communicating. They'll say, oh, push this button and AI will write it for you. Just put in a few key words. And I choose not to do that because I think that my brain will get really sloppy, lazy, fat. And I like to use the power of the spoken word or the written word. And, and the same for you, like to make something that is, you call it primitive, but to me it's just... It's more thoughtful. It's at a slower pace than all the really fast cut things that uh, people are used to now because of the one second of, of uh, attention span that people have been trained to have. I think people um, want to calm down, to want to get more quiet. And that's because we're out of touch with nature. And many people need to be reintroduced 
to nature. And nature is sometimes fast, yeah, during a hurricane. And sometimes it's really slow. When you're sitting by the bank of a river and you're just watching it go by and you can see the little bugs on top of the surface skating around looking for other little tiny bugs to eat, you have to slow down to see those things, to see the little insects. Or the other day we were swimming in the river here where we are and all of a sudden I said, hey Carter, you see that bird up there? And it was a bald eagle. Yeah. Watching us. Just watching us. For a long time, too. <laughs> he was watching us up there. Nobody else around on this beautiful main river. The Presumskit, isn't that yeah. the name of it? And um, I thought, how cool is that? We are being observed by Mr. Bald Eagle up there. A magnificent, beautiful eagle who was resting on a a branch, wasn't afraid of us, wasn't thinking, you know, we were the enemy or had to be hidden. It was just a beautiful moment. He was probably figuring whether you were small enough for him to snatch out of the river with his talons. No, I think he was just curious. (laughs) Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. When you see videos... If I'd have been him, that's what I'd have been thinking. When you see videos of of talons reaching out and, you know, fish getting caught in their talons is pretty pretty amazing. I wouldn't want to be... Well, we had a dachshund once who was taken off by an eagle. Remember that? Our, our dachshund, no, Bruno. Bruno. And also, an eagle came and, and got him once. Really? Yes. Old Bruno. He was the dog with a thousand oh, lives. I forgot that. Did he had a gator, He had a gator attack. He had a, a hawk snatch. He had... I forgot about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he finally got kicked in the head by a horse, poor old Bruno. But, you know, it's a tough life when you live around nature. And um, we don't protect our animals by keeping them inside and leashed. And, you know, we, we have a relationship with nature that sometimes is very peaceful and quiet. And other times is life-threatening. You know, like those black widow spiders that we have to gas out of our double-headed outhouse out here in where yeah we're in the Maine. ocean if you get if you get on the ocean the ocean can be very unforgiving that's for sure yeah you don't know what you're doing if you go out there you have to know what you're doing you really do and we're both ocean going people carter and i both have spent time on vessels offshore offshore and um you know before we became a couple Carter spent a lot of time on tugboats, and I spent a lot of time on sailboats. And so we know what it's like to live by the rules of nature. Now I've become a shore bastard. Well, me too. But that's you know, they, that's what the ocean people call the land people. Yeah, but once you've once you've <laughs> been accustomed to living on the sea or anywhere where you have to really be much more accommodating to nature, whether you're living under a bridge as a homeless person, or you're camping in your van, which we did, staying even in a Walmart parking lot on our way down to Maine. <laughs> that was an experience. You know, we we live by our wits. We don't have to have luxury accommodations. We we just live with whatever the day is bringing. I don't think that makes us sure You didn't sure think bastards. that Walmart place was a luxury accommodation? It was, I thought it was pretty good. We could get out of the car and go inside, man, and have everything you want. Had a whole grocery store there, anything you want. I had to do a prayer of protection. I did not feel entirely 100% safe. No. Uh-uh. Well, there's lunatics out there. It was a little bit there. iffy when they, they started, those drug guys came <laughs> yeah. nearby, started when they started right having next the to where we drug were sleeping. Guys. <laughs> anyway, we, we, prayers of protection is, going on. is the way I operate. You know, when I start off on a trip, I, I like to just put white light of protection call it corny but i believe in prayer i believe in you know operating with those unseen forces i i put the prayer protection when i'm driving not only for myself to be protected but you know for anybody out there who is like having a heart attack or texting or something so they don't run into me so let me ask you this do you think is is happiness something that can be it, it could be uh, 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 consciously attempted. I mean, do you do you try to attempt to be happy? I mean, do you are you aware that oh, I'm not happy. I need to be happy, or or what can I do today to be happy? Do you do you think about Absolutely. that like that? Well, that's why it's so important that we took this 
little intermission in our lives to assess and to be objective, not just to set goals. Uh, you know, life is not just about goals. You have to be flexible. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say minute-to-minute -minute basis, I am always assessing, like, am I putting myself down, for instance, just to give you a for instance. Yeah. Because I could say, hey, you know, I just made a mistake. I don't have to say, oh, I'm so stupid. I made that dumb mistake. No, I could say, wow, there's another opportunity to grow, and I'm not going to call it stupid. I'm just going to call it an opportunity. Like, we, we've had this exercise. Yeah, you've been doing that a lot lately. In our, in our, in our, Consciously. Spir in our spiritual group, we've had this specific exercise to be kind to ourselves on a not daily only, basis. Not only to others, but to ourselves. To yeah. not just love one another, but to first really love ourselves. And... And by making a commitment to do that just for a week, I realized how many negative put-downs I have in my mind. I'm not even going to blame it on, you know, parents or upbringing. I, it just is what it is. You know, I think the blame game is, is stupid. At one point, you just have to recognize that we have these impressions. Call them impressions. And once we recognize that they're there, in my case... I have an insecurity button that's huge, it's sticking out like, you know, like a knob. And at any given time during my day, it's I can easy to fall back. I can I can put myself down and feel miserable. But so this last week I've been practicing recognizing how I need to love myself more, to forgive myself more, to just accept the fact that yes, sometimes I make uh, errors and not to do anything else except to say, "Oh, okay, I can correct that now." And one of the good, and the good, one of the things about that is, the the key to that is being conscious of it and being aware of it. And that's one good thing about having a group m meetings with other people that I have found because we have this nice month, uh, weekly group, a prayer ground group that we have with these people, and we discuss, you know, stuff like. You know how do you how do you oneness. how do you bring about how do you bring God into your daily life, which is a spiritual exercise? But how do you bring it down and manifest it in the day to day? And in and, this group, we refer you... to that power that sometimes is called God. We refer to it as the One, or Christ consciousness. You know, oneness consciousness. Search for searching for God, and so. One of those things that we have discovered is that happiness uh, is a direct function of closeness to God. That's the, and and so, what is closeness to God? Well, it's a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So, but what is it to you, Carter? Well, I was thinking about the other day. They had uh, there was a thing from a scripture that said, you know, and finally, after all of these things. Uh, 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 whatever is beautiful, whatever is kind, kind, whatever is nice, whatever is lovely, whatever is embracing, and whatever is positive, positive think on these things, and and, uh, and 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 that's true because we have a choice on how we think, and if we and we can think and wallow around in ugliness and perversion and torture and meanness and anger and contempt. We, th these are choices. We can, we can wallow in that stuff if we want to. And if we do, it's guaranteed to bring us down and take us away from, from happiness. And that isn't to say that we're Pollyannish. It just means mm -hmm. that there's a choice, that there's beautiful and beauty and wonderment out there. And if we can choose to think on these things, and that's the admonition in this scripture was to don't think about... Uh, meanness and ugliness right. and cruelty think on beauty and kindness and love and and if if i find that if i do that and that was part of this exercise that my frame of mind changes from a cloud to mm -hmm. to brightness and 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 light and, shine, and 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 the and the end result of that is once you once i'm thinking on that then i start feeling better mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, uh, feeling better is one of my primary 
things. And you may say, oh, that's mundane and that, that, that's, that. but it isn't to me. Well, you've got God a his, is you've got a history of think, also depression, Carter. Yeah, well, thinking is how you feel is a big deal yes. to me. And feeling happy is a goal yes. uh, as, as much as possible. So studying how to think on these wonderful things and beautiful things is the result is we feel better. So, I I think it's the sign of a really evolved being to consider happiness or contentment, as it's also called santosha in Sanskrit, to have that as a goal in life, to have that as a primary focus. I think that is a beautiful thing. And that's why I'm proud to be married to you, my darling husband. There you go. You know, like you are just filled with surprises and, and adventure and at the basis of it, when we first met each other, like 35 years ago, we were, were celebrating 33 years married in October. I, you know, I was struck by how much you thought about spirit. Okay, M- might have called it a different name, like Jesus Christ was, you know, on your tongue a lot. But um, to me, spirit is 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 like, you know, like I said before, oneness. So, Christ consciousness is easier for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, or people, you, people nobody can be against the consciousness cosmic consciousness of the way or Jesus Buddha was, consciousness but, is, but the whole many different ways of describing it. But you and I, it took us a while to figure out we were talking about the same thing because words can sometimes be fickle. But we were talking about the same thing. It just took us the vocabulary to find out, and that's uh, what we found out through this group that we are involved with the search for god group and so i i mean i think it's a noble thing if i if i met somebody for instance whose goal was to be a billionaire or to you know to influence the, the world in technology i mean okay that's their thing but that would not be somebody i would want to hang out with 24/7 because that's not to me the essence of what i consider what the most important thing in life is which is to feel at one with everything and and call that happiness or contentment or whatever maybe it goes beyond describing a feeling it's like sublime bliss do you remember what ha- mem- remember what happened to us yesterday a very unique thing happened cuz we used to come to Maine <clears throat> and it was 99% white and we used to be mm-hmm. moaned cuz we're from the south and Tessa spent a lot of time in the islands I spent a lot of time in Latin America and we were kind of saying well you know, it's not very. It was so boring. It's not very so diverse. It's, it's, it was so white that there, <laughs> yeah. you know we missed the, the 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 the, the interaction with mm-hmm. a more diverse right. crowd. And yesterday, mm-hmm. we went over to the main mall, and eighty percent of the people at the main mall mm-hmm. were from were not white. They right. were people of color. They were. There were Africans in African dress. There were mm-hmm. Arabs with the mm-hmm. Arab dress and females with those kafiyas or whatever you call those things they wear on their Scarves, head. Kind of and they were Asians. And remember those Cambodian kids we yeah, saw yeah, at the yeah. opening? Right. And everybody in that mall was smiling. Yeah. It was unbelievable how great right. it was to be in there. And it was, I didn't realize it really till we left. And cause, uh, you remember those two black ladies that gave us the biggest smile, as big a smile as anybody's ever <laughs> for, smiled. For we just, no reason we, except we were just like, we were in their way and they moved out. Of, we, we, yeah. we all, all of us at the same time kind of stepped aside <laughs> yeah. so the other one could pass. And yeah. she gave us a great big smile and we smiled back. And the mm-hmm. whole place was yeah. just. Just full of goodness and Love. full of happiness. Everybody in that place was <laughs> thinking on good things, on yeah. thinking of, on, on, and it was just a beautiful experience to have that. Yeah. And I thought to myself, and because I've been concerned about the southern border and the all the immigrants coming in and all and the and, and the As money everybody and how is expensive concerned. it is right. and whether they're terrorists or going to murder or rapists or whatever, but. This was good for me to experience this because this is a direct result mm-hmm. of all these immigrants coming in mm-hmm. because there weren't any up here in Maine. And they have, obviously, they have b- brought a lot of those people 
And, and I know a friend of mine in particular who's got two African ladies uh, from their Mother church and who he's, they're giving refuge to or living with them in their house. And uh, He doesn't even know what language they're speaking. He can't even, <laughs> I know. And he's, he's not sure if it's too much trouble or whether it's not enough or whether it's okay. He's just doing it out of the goodness of their heart and love. And mm-hmm. his wife is committed to that too. And it's nice. And mm-hmm. it's, it's good. And it's good for everybody. And this... This is a really good aspect of this immigrant thing that's come in here, mm-hmm. this immigration thing, is that all of these new people who don't even speak English, most of them, are here, mm-hmm. and they're all making their way. But I can tell you, they are making their way with joy. They are glad mm-hmm. to be here, and they're down there moving around, doing stuff, and they're being kind and nice, and it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a beautiful thing, man. Okay, so we were here 25 years ago, and our little boy, uh, Cully, he's now 38, so he was like, I don't know, he was no more than eight. And he brought his best friend, who happened to be a little black boy named Carl. So two eight-year-olds, right? One white, one black. And we were here for two weeks, and I asked Carl one day, I said, so Carl, how are you enjoying being in Maine? He had never been out of the state of Florida. He said, well, it's real nice, but... I said, but what? He said, well, I've only counted like two black people. He was, Since he's been here. He was counting them on his head. He said, no. <laughs> there even. weren't any. And it's like, wow, what a yeah. difference, you know? I mean, the diversity really definitely. Us so much. Yeah, you really see it when you go to a place like Maine that used to just be so white and Dunkin' Donuts on every corner and people just getting fatter and fatter. And for some reason, the people are not so obese now, and you know maybe people have gotten smart about not eating so but many man, donuts. There, there are people <laughs> of color everywhere. Yeah. Portland is just jammed with yeah. people from all over the world. It's, it's, it's joyous. It's, 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 it's joyous. It's joyous, man. The it oneness is, thing is say. happening. I mean, uh, for open-hearted people, open-minded people, you know, we can see that it's happening and with and embrace it and. And society will figure it out. We'll figure out how to get everybody so that we work together and pray together and and live together and and just mingle more. We yep, we'll, we're getting we there. will figure it out. We're leveling the, play, the, the playing field. The job the playing field is being leveled. Yeah. And uh, and once we get the DEI thing under control, so that it does what it's supposed to do, and not get in, not become an aberrant force of more prejudice and judgment yeah. to get that part out of it. That we will, we'll get there. We just it's a small steps. We just have to keep stay the course and keep our eye focused on the prize and and, so the, and truth, not my truth or your truth or anybody right. else's truth. Just truth. Yeah. We all need to pursue. Everybody what's has true, the right to express not what my truth is yes. or your truth. That so, whole idea. So I'd like to dumb idea. Bring in a, a tribute to Miss. D. Israel, Dr. D. Israel, because we're getting ready to say goodbye for now until our next episode. But D., uh, for those of you who've been listening to Z. Lord, was the only person we've ever had as a guest on Z. Lord. During the pandemic, we brought her over, sat her down on the couch with us, and talked about her life. And she is turning 100 on September 18th or something. Something like that. And, um, and so at the time she was uh, 94 or 95, I forget how old she was. Um, so obviously it was less than five years ago, so she was 96 or something. Anyway, what a tribute for a woman who was the first uh, mental health counselor in bed New York. She grew up in Harlem uh, from Barbadian parentage and she was actually told when she was in college that just forget it you ca- you can't work with black people they don't have the ability to to tra- change and transform and she sat there being shocked and insulted but yet she persevered and she got her degree and and for what an amazing life to see for a person who has been alive for a hundred years to see how it used to be so bad so oppressive so racist and yet today we are in a different era and it will be the same it will continue we will keep opening and embracing and working things out one by one until the next hundred years when we're going to have even more like uh oneness 
and, God, the, the, and the, happiness the, 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 and the progress we've made since the 50s in, in central Florida when it was so so segregated and now in my lifetime my short lifetime it's in one lifetime that there's been this massive change it's it uh, it's good it's it's good we're, all, we're we're getting there yeah we just got to keep going and keep everybody together on and realize yeah. that we are actually all one so as okay. a tri- as a tribute to our deep respect and acknowledgement of the sacred forces which some people could call thoughtfulness or prayer i'd like to end our little discussion today because it's the first it's the beginning of a first time back and this is a, a new beginning for us i'd like to end it with just a little quiet prayer okay and carter you're so good at that can you just lead us into this prayer of, of acceptance right. awareness acceptance and taking the action of love and happiness thank you Heavenly Father, Father, Mother, God, great being, one cosmos, thank you for this time. Thank you for all of our friends. Thank you for all of the beings that are here on this planet and and elsewhere, wherever they may be, and all the beautiful manifestations of your of your face, which are in the grass and in the grasshoppers and the butterflies and the trees and the birds and... Uh, and all the wonderful, nice people that are listening to this podcast, watch over them, bless their lives, bless their families, bless them in, in thinking on beautiful things and, and bringing goodness into, into their thoughts so that they can, they can expand and grow and feel good. And me, myself especially, that I can, that I can reject uh, uh, any kind of... of of judgment. negative thinking and judgment and mm-hmm. and watch over us all. Thanks for this time. And we will give you the praise for it all. Amen. Um, Until next time. All right. Adios. Ciao.